Food delivery riders on e-scooters are no longer allowed on footpaths. Now you might think, I don't own a PMD, this doesn't concern me. Well, think again, because chances are it might hit you where it hurts the most, your tummy. Hi, thank you. This is how most of us eat these days. Hey, Singaporeans order food delivery more than anyone else in the world. A whopping 69% of the population order at least once a month. And of that group, 53% have been using the apps more and more in the last two years. In this episode, I want to find out if food delivery is still going to be worth our money. Now, Grab has warned customers of a longer wait time because of this PMD ban. It's been about three weeks since this ban has taken place. I wonder how bad it's gonna get. Okay, I'm gonna order something on Grab Food. On the app, it says it take about 27 minutes to arrive. Now, that's the usual time. Okay, so I've just placed an order. It's now 4 p.m., so let's see how long it takes to arrive. Hi, thank you. Wow, now that was surprisingly on time. I wonder if other people have the same experience. Hi guys, do you use food delivery services often? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. How often is that? Uh, one month about 11 times. Wow, 11 times. And for yourself? For me, per month, five times. Do you find the quality of the food that's delivered to you, is it the same as in a restaurant? Uh, compared to delivery food, it's almost the same. Uh. Do you find that your food is delivered to you later than usual? Sometimes they deliver the food a bit late. Oh, okay. So did yeah. you find that more recently? Yeah, recently. So when your food arrives late, does it still taste the same? It's a bit soggy. Uh. Because oh. the food will be delivered a bit late. Do you order food deliveries? Uh, yes. How often is that? Once in a while, yes. Okay, but when you do order, right, do you mm -hmm. find that the quality of your food is the same as when you eat it in a restaurant? Uh, maybe not as hot, you know. It doesn't come as hot. Now, we all know that the quality of a delivered dish will never be the same as what you eat in a restaurant, especially with longer waiting times. But I want to know just how different the quality is. To help us answer this question, I've recruited these chefs. Anthony is the chef owner of French Bistro Summer Hill, while Constantino runs Fire Bake, a kitchen dedicated to serving up wood-fired European cuisine. Serving up lip-smacking food for eager customers is their bread and butter. Anthony, how long have you been using a delivery service? Just a couple of months, actually. Have you ever ordered your own food by delivery? No, I haven't. We've had delivery for about uh, one year now. I saw this experiment by a consumer goods company, Unilever, where chefs gave their take on takeaway. I'm going to recreate this experiment with a twist. So, yeah, this is one of our popular, the prawn cappellini. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our burger here. I guess yes. we, we share both? Yes, we can share. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'd love to share. Constantino and Anthony will be tucking into popular dishes delivered from their own kitchens. Thank you. Okay, so shall we dig into the main thing, the roast chicken? Sure. Yeah? People always worry whether the breast meat will be dry, especially for a takeaway where it's been sitting for quite a while. How's it? I mean, I think it tastes all right, but how about you? I mean, you know the difference between when you prepare it at the restaurant and when mm. you send it by delivery. It's still juicy, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously it's not as hot as it usually is yeah. when we serve it in the restaurant. And you can see from the skin, it's kind of, because it's steamed inside the box a bit. Yeah. So that's kind of soaked into the skin. It hasn't got that nice crispy caramelized texture okay. on the outside anymore. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your food when it's delivered? Overall, on a scale of 1 to 10, probably about a 5. As a chef, what are some of your concerns when it comes to food delivery? 
definitely the handling of the food. Like this is roast chicken. We don't want it to come out looking like am penyet, you know? Yeah. And all flattened and crushed up. Mm -hmm. Or for gravy to be seeping out, you know? Um, so definitely that's a concern is whether they're able to handle it properly. What do you think? It's not like straight out of the kitchen, it's melted cheese, yeah. uh, so it tends to get a little bit on the, on the rubbery side. The greens, obviously uh, romaine lettuce, um, will, will tend to cook a little bit further with yeah. all the warm ingredients, so you lose a little bit of that crunch. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate the food that has been delivered to us? I would say a good, a good 7. The trip from kitchen to doorstep did change up the dishes a little. Chef Anthony's chicken was a bit soggier than he would have liked, and Chef Constantino felt that the cheese in his burger was a bit rubbery and the lettuce a bit damp. Bjorn Shen, chef owner of Artichoke, a Middle Eastern inspired restaurant, has decided he's had enough. Despite seeing his revenue rise after joining a delivery app, one year ago, he pulled the plug. So if you'd like to eat his food, you'd have to make the trip down to his restaurant. I want to know, what drove him to this rather extreme position? Why does your restaurant not have any food delivery? So we used to be on uh, a couple of delivery platforms here at Artichoke. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure like, oh, you know, you got to keep up, you got to stick with the times, you know. Yeah. If not, you're going to fall behind. And look, so many people are eating at home. If you're not on the delivery game, mm. then you're, you're not in it, you know. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure to get on and we tried, you know, we, we gave it a good shot. Then we decided that it wasn't right for us. Why is that so? When you come and eat in my restaurant, Artichoke, and you pay $30 for a plate of food, if you go and order that on a delivery platform and it's put into a box for you, and you receive it at home, 30 minutes later and you open the box and your food's kind of like in this rectangular thing on your coffee table at home, I think the experience is completely different. If we want to have anything that's got temperature contrast, like a warm salad, which has got some warm components and some cold components, I mean, it's going to hold those temperature differences for maybe the first three minutes or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And you'll still experience that at the restaurant when you come and eat. Yeah. But if you leave something like that for 20, 30 minutes, everything's going to become one temperature. So as a chef, how did it make you feel knowing your customers are eating colder food? Oh man, it breaks my soul. <laughs> Oh, you man. Know, like, I mean, I feel bad, you know. I really took ourselves off these platforms because I felt bad for the customers. Mm. And I'm putting myself in the, in the shoes of these customers. And I'm like, would I be happy if I was them? Which part of the delivery process were you bothered by? One thing that we were promised as merchants was that they would separate hot food and cold food. Mm -hmm. So there would be a hot compartment in the delivery box and a cold compartment. So all the drinks and desserts and anything that was cold would go in the cold compartment and all the hot food would be in the hot compartment and it would you know, be packed separately and delivered separately as well. Uh, turns out that never happened. Oh, I know very well. I'm a delivery platform user. I just ordered delivery last night. Mm -hmm. They put my dessert right on top of my hot dish. Oh dear. And it's not the first time. I'm literally telling you this happens like every time. Oh man. You know? Okay. I think the easiest way for me to explain to you mm -hmm. is to actually show you how the same dish looks when it's, you know, eaten in the restaurant versus when it's in a box. Should I maybe bring you into the kitchen? Yes, please. So, yeah. just as, as a perfect example, look at this. These are green harissa prawns. This is yep. how you'll get it if you eat here in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And this is it in a box. And I remember how I was saying that, you know, a lot of food here contains like herbs and all that to make yeah. it fresh. These herbs are going to die in a few minutes once the lid goes on. Okay. So it looks like and, that now. And this hasn't even been like moved around yet? Not yet. It hasn't been shook around. It hasn't okay. sat in there with a the lid on for like 20 minutes yet. Mm -hmm. I guess it's quite self-explanatory, you know, when you look at it like that. Yeah, I mean, this definitely looks far more tempting to eat than this. And that is exactly why I took Artichoke off delivery platforms. Bjorn is the exception to the rule when it comes to putting his food online. There are over 14,000 restaurants that are on food apps with no explicit guidelines when it comes to the state of food being delivered or how fast it should reach the customer. But some writers tell me they try to deliver food within 20 minutes of pickup from the restaurant. I reached out to Deliveroo 
the London-based firm made it to Singapore's shores in 2013. Since then, it's become one of the biggest food delivery apps in Singapore, hosting over 4,500 restaurants. And it relies on people like Cat to bring food to your doorstep. I want to see for myself how they try to maintain the quality of the food during its trip from kitchen to home. How long does one order usually take to deliver from restaurant to customer? So there's no actual uh, target time to send food, so it's really an own time, own target. But at the same time, I want to make sure that the food is still delivered on time and still hot by the time it gets to the customer. Thank you. How long would that normally be? Typically, that would be about 20 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it depends on you know traffic as well as the wait time at the restaurant okay. as well. So when you get hot and cold food, mm -hmm. do you normally separate it and uh, put it in different compartments? Oh yeah, definitely. So restaurants, um, what they'll do is, you know, if there's say ice cream or mm -hmm. whatnot, they'll pack it separately. And for me personally, I'll put a divider in between just to make sure that the temperatures don't mix. So usually the restaurant will separate the it's already separated. items and then you put in different compartments. Yep, yeah, just make sure it's separately. I see. But if the restaurants themselves pack hot and cold foods together, can the riders be expected to take the step to separate them in the bag? It hasn't got that nice, crispy, caramelized texture okay. on the outside anymore. You lose a little bit of that crunch. They put my dessert right on top of my hot dish. When food makes its way from a restaurant to my house, the quality takes a hit. Now that might not come as a surprise to most of us, we know what we're getting when we have food delivered. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. But I wonder, is there a way to close the gap in quality between dishes served at restaurants and those that make it to your door? Okay, so now I've got two conflicting pieces of information from two different people. Bjorn says that the hot and cold food is not really separated in the delivery process. Kat says that the restaurants separate the hot and cold food. So now, ultimately, who is responsible for my food being delivered in good condition? I am here to give the platform a chance to respond. Siddharth Shankar is Deliveroo's general manager in Singapore. Since taking over the position in 2017, he's expanded Deliveroo's operations, boosting the number of restaurants and riders on the app. Sid, how do you ensure that the food um, that is delivered is the same standard as when you eat at a restaurant? Uh, the key thing that we have is we actually have an algorithm in the background called Frank. Frank is it looks at all the orders, it looks at all the restaurants, and it looks at all the riders who are uh, logged into the app. And it tries to make sure that the rider gets to the restaurant as the food is getting prepared, so that the food does not sit around waiting for a very long time, getting cold in case it is hot food. When, once the riders pick up the food, the actual travel time is on average six minutes. Oh. So as a customer, you might get your food in 30 minutes or so, mm -hmm. but the actual travel time for the food once it gets picked up is six minutes, so which is really not a lot. Mm. So you don't actually set any target times for the riders to pick up and deliver the food? The estimated travel time depends upon the vehicle type, it depends upon the distance, it depends upon uh, whether it's raining or not, so on and so forth. Do you actually have any guidelines for your restaurant partners on how to prep or package the food? For normal restaurant partners, we don't have explicit guidelines per se. But what we do is we, we look at customer feedback very closely, we look at rider feedback very closely, and if there is spillage, if there is some packing which is sub optimal or if there are consumer feedback coming across that some kinds of food are not traveling well or keeping well, yeah. then we will give that feedback to those specific restaurants. So Sid, I got some feedback that the hot and cold food sometimes is packed together um, in the delivery. So, you know, who is responsible for that? So the thermal bag that the riders have uh, has a separate area for hot food and for cold food, so they shouldn't be going in together at the same time. I see. But if this is feedback coming through, then we will give this feedback to the restaurants and then uh, try and make sure that this doesn't happen um, going forward. Okay. So when Deliveroo picks up the food from the restaurant, it is up to the restaurant how it is, how it is packaged, because it's important for the restaurants to do proper packaging and, mm -hmm. and, and to make sure that this food travels, travels properly. So packaging is more or less up to them? 
So according to Sid, Deliveroo leaves it up to the restaurants on how to package their food such that it gets to the customers in good quality. Which begs the question, how do chefs make the food delivery proof? Chef Anthony is going to take up the challenge. He wants to close the quality gap between food delivered to you and the food he serves at his restaurant. He's going to figure out how to keep his chicken crispy from the time it leaves the oven to the moment it reaches his customers' homes. I'm giving Anthony a week to come up with a solution. So do you have any idea how you could possibly tweak it? Um, I think maybe we can play around with the packaging, maybe the cooking method even. Mm. Something we can do to preserve the quality of the food. That's really what I want to zero in on here. Okay. There are three major players in Singapore's food delivery game. Food Panda reached our shores in 2012. Deliveroo started up in Singapore in 2015. And the new kid on the block, Grab Food, began operations in 2018. These apps act as matchmakers, serving as middlemen between over 10,000 restaurants and us. According to a survey by Deliveroo, over 76% of us prefer these apps to cooking at home or takeaways. And nearly 70% of us have increased our spendings on these apps by 25% in the last two years. The top reason cited by respondents? Convenience. But does this convenience come at a cost? Deliveries can be as high as up to $4. Now, we can see that when we confirm our order, but what about the cost that we don't see? For some answers, I've arranged to meet Sherry Tan. She works for Seedly, a platform that helps us make smarter decisions when it comes to our wallets. Sherry, this cup of bubble tea, mm -hmm. um, does it cost more on a delivery app? Oh yeah, yes it does, it does way more. About 30% depending on the merchant that you purchase from. 30% is quite high. So where is this 30% going to? Because they would like to cover for like the takeaway services that they offer, like the packaging. Mm. But most of the time, they actually want to cover for the commissions that they have to pay for these food delivery services. But if I'm paying more for the same dish, then I think chefs should be making an effort to tweak their dishes to survive the trip on our roads. It's been seven days since Anthony began on the challenge we've set him. Will he deliver? Thank you. I order food through a delivery app about three times a week. According to a 2018 study by American data firm Nielsen, 44% of Singaporeans have ordered food online higher than the global average of 33%. But can this food be close in quality to actually eating at a restaurant? It's been seven days since I challenged Chef Anthony from Summer Hill to try and tweak his recipe, or the way he packages his food, so that it stands up to the perils of delivery. The dish he's working with? Roasted chicken, one of the most requested items on his menu. It's our signature dish, so we really want people to be able to bring home a little bit of the experience. Mm -hmm. I think I want to zero in really on improving the quality. I think definitely the condensation from being in the box for so long. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely my main concern, that it's making the, the chicken soggy. What do you have for me, man? Okay, so this may seem a little uh, strange. What we've done is we've actually vacuum packed everything. Yeah. It gets a bit technical, mm -hmm. uh, but basically we vacuum seal it and then we sous vide it, so we cook it in a water bath. And then this becomes a bit of a DIY thing and you just pop this in your oven and reheat it and it maintains the quality. As simple as that. As simple as that. So then you don't need to worry about condensation. But we've done all the cooking, uh, we've rendered the fat from the skin, which you can't really do in a home uh, oven mm -hmm. well. So when you eat this at home, it comes out like you're eating it in the restaurant. How about the packaging issues we had earlier? Like, how does this solve it? Mm. So before with the packaging issues, uh, we worried about the condensation. But because it's packed in this way, all they do is open it and they throw it into the oven and reheat it. So I think with this, we've kind of really maximized the way that we can maintain the quality of the food uh, for a delivery. Nice! Come on guys, dinner party! Let's go! So that was definitely an improvement from before. Only thing is, I'm not sure if I'd consider it a very quick fix dinner option. 
Perhaps instead of changing up recipes to survive the delivery process, we should look at changing our choices for food delivery. According to a survey by Grab Food, these are Singapore's top 10 most ordered items. But are some foods better suited for food delivery than others? One chef owner seems to think so. Andre's son has been on various food apps for the past four years. I'm meeting him for some tips. So what, in your opinion, would be some of the best dishes that you could order on delivery? Best dishes, salads, mm -hmm. you know, like the grain bowls and stuff like that. Pizzas, I, I love pizza and I eat hot or cold pizzas, whether it's, you know, a day later, take out your fridge, you don't even have to heat it up, it's still good. And how about the worst? Your fried chicken places. I love fried chicken, but you never get the same kind of crunch that you get in a fried chicken. Pastas and noodles, okay. when you get it, it soaks up everything and if it takes 30 to 40 minutes to get to you, it doesn't have that same kind of textures and the food quality that you're actually serving at your restaurant. Food delivery apps have without a doubt changed the way we eat. But do they meet our needs? Well, they just might if we pick the right dishes, if restaurants can prep them to survive the trip, and if apps can meet the delivery deadlines.